Okay, it's going to be a review of WrestleMania 34. The first match of the night, we had The Miz defending the Intercontinental Championship against Seth Rollins and Finn Balor. Uh, the one thing I'll say about this show is I was very happy with the match order. I, th I thought the uh, the order of the matches throughout the show was perfect. This is exactly how I would have you know put the match order. Uh, so, so no complaints about that uh, for the show for me. But uh, I thought this was the perfect way to open up the show. I thought this was awesome. You know, uh, great stuff between Rollins and Finn Balor. They just continued the magic that they worked on Raw, particularly the uh, the Falcon Arrow double suplex into the uh, small package. That was that was a great spot right there. Uh, great, great believable near falls. Exciting breakups. You know, the, the Miz kind of brought his own little sprinkle to the, the matchup right there. Um, I, I thought Rollins being able to use the curb stomp really made this uh, match work even more. You know, Rollins using the curb stomp, it gives him that extra finisher that he was missing. I, I, I hated when Rollins used to use the pedigree, but now that he's using the curb stomp, um, like I said, it, it, it just brings so much more... Um, you just take him a lot more seriously now. I, th I just thought he was he, he needed that extra finisher. And at the same time, he could pull out the Phoenix Splash. He's got the God's Last Gift. Rollins has a lot of good finishers in his arsenal. But, yeah, like I said, guys, th th this was awesome. Uh, great triple threat match to start off the show. R really, to me, th this over-delivered. So these guys have a lot to be proud of. Arguably the match of the night, I would say. Next up, we have uh, Charlotte Flair uh, taking on Asuka for the uh, SmackDown Women's Championship. Uh, I was wrong. I, I thought the crowd was going to be... Now, now, you know what? They, they You got to give these two girls credit because I thought the crowd was really... Uh, you know, they, 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 they had to work for everything in this match. The crowd wasn't you know going crazy for either of them. They, they, they were very respectful, but they weren't going crazy. But uh, Charlotte and Asuka worked uh, extremely hard here. Charlotte actually hit the um, beautiful moonsault. Asuka countered it into, I believe it was a triangle choke. I thought that was a great transition. Uh, Charlotte eventually busted out a uh, Marafuji's finisher from the top rope. I can't remember what Marafuji called that. Was it, it was either the pole shift or... I don't think he called it the Shiri Noe. Shiri Noe is something different. But, uh, yeah, that was she pulled off the Marafuji finisher right there, which came off great. Charlotte, uh, you know, I, I'm not the biggest Charlotte fan, but I, I thought she looked fantastic here. Uh, Asuka, I thought there'd be kind of like a growing pains, um, you know, coming over from NXT. But, you know, I, I thought this was um, really, really good stuff. I mean, it, it definitely exceeded my expectations. So hats off to those two girls right there. They're more, more probably the second or third best match of the night. Um, next up, we had Randy Orton defending the United States Championship against Bobby Roode, uh, Rusev, and, and Jinder Mahal. Uh, personally, I would have scratched this from the show because it didn't, didn't get enough time. Uh, I, I thought this could have used about maybe three or four more minutes for them to really get going. It kind of ended as soon as they were developing, uh, you know, a rhythm to the match. And I just would have scrapped this. This was just kind of corny to me with uh, Jinder Mahal going over, you know, winning the United States Championship. And, you know, obviously they're going to Saudi Arabia later on this month. I just think that's so corny just to give a guy a belt because they're going overseas. I mean, I, I guess it makes sense from a business standpoint. But honestly, is, is it really that important? Are you really going to not draw as much money for that show if, if you don't put the, that belt on Jinder Mahal? I don't know. I just uh, looking back on it, it was kind of predictable, but um, yeah, I, I I thought these guys worked really well uh, while this was going. You know, or Orton got kind of a lackluster pop, um, and it kind of um, it kind of shows you where he's at right now. You know, the the, the Rusev was pretty over here. You know, Rude's entrance and everything he did was fine. Uh, I I I really enjoyed this while it lasted, but if they weren't going to give it, you know, that extra four or five minutes to, to develop that rhythm. Uh, I just would have scrapped it from the show. I, I really would have. Um, so let's just move on from there. Next up, we had, yeah, I, uh, Kurt Angle and Ronda Rousey taking on Triple H and Stephanie McMahon. Awesome match here. I'm going to give this four stars. Um, I, I'm going to say th 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 uh, uh, very much a contender for match of the night. I, I will say this is probably the match of the night, in, in my opinion. Um, give props to Kurt Angle, too. I thought Angle, now I'm a huge Angle fan, so let me talk about Angle first, but there's just a lot to talk about here. I thought Angle looked kind of awkward in the beginning. You know, just, Kurt just doesn't have those, the pepper behind those punches and the movement that he used to. <laughs> but I'll tell you, him and uh, Angle and uh, Triple H, it, as the match progressed, they, they started developing that chemistry again. Like, kind of got off a little bit shaky. You know, at, at, at this point in their careers, 
Triple H seems like he's gotten, he, he's kind of adjusted to getting older a little bit more than Kurt Angle. You can see Triple H was kind of calling out some of the spots. When, when they did the spine buster, you could hear Trip say uh, spine buster. So that, that kind of hurt the match a little bit for me. But, you know, th there was a segment in the match where um, uh, Angle was giving him belly to belly. He's Germans, uh, slingshot to the, uh, the turnbuckle. Angle counters it into a uh, angle slam. Pretty good, you know. Uh, pretty good uh, counters to the pedigree, uh, to the ankle lock. I mean, uh, they, they weren't beautifully transitioned, but you know, it, it was exciting. So I thought, you know, for for two guys that are going to be fifty years old uh, next year, I thought Angle and Triple H worked very well here. Now, uh, let me say this about Ronda Rousey and Stephanie McMahon. Uh, a lot better than expected. Uh, uh, give Stephanie credit. I, I I thought she was in a tough spot here. You know, she was going to take criticism for underselling or overselling, and I thought she was fine. I, I really thought you could tell she spent a lot of time training. This match is just very well put together. I thought her character and uh, you know her facial expressions and and, and and her bitchiness, everything worked well for her. I, I give her a thumbs up. And Ronda Rousey too. You know, I was kind of hard on Ronda. I I kind of said you know. I, you know, I, I just think there was a little bit too much. I, I think WWE kind of made her do too many interviews, and I, I, I think she, uh, I think the pressure kind of got to her. You know, Max Kellerman and all these guys from ESPN, you know, asking her questions about, you know, the, the losing and the negativity. I, I think it really got to her, and, you know, the interviews came off, you know, more awkward than a Bill Cartwright jump shot for me. I, I just, I just kind of found her unlikable going into the match, but... Uh, but, you know, give her credit. I thought she looked great. You know, it wasn't just submission-oriented stuff. I, I thought her suplexes, her intensity, her timing, I thought everything worked well with her. I, she, uh, the crowd, and, and you could tell, I, I think this was, you know, a non-pro wrestling crowd, uh, you know, more than people are giving it credit for. I, I think there was a lot of people there that were, um, you know, UFC fans or Ronda Rousey fans. I, I, I don't think this was your typical you know, diehard, um, you know, pro wrestling crowd. I, I do think there was a lot of just, you know, UFC exclusive fans in the crowd. Now that I think about it, looking back on it. But like I said, great mixed tag match, possibly the best mixed tag match of all time. Uh, I, I, I'd have to think about it, but it, it probably was because there hasn't been that many great ones in the past. But uh, great return for Angle. You know, a a Angle's performance is kind of going to get overshadowed because of this. Like I said, guys, I, I wish there was more tension between Angle and Triple H. I, I like to see a one-on-one -on -one match with Angle and Triple H at SummerSlam. I, I definitely think they can do it, but I wouldn't be surprised if they kind of dropped the whole Angle and Triple H, uh, you know, uh, feud a after this match. But yeah, um, but yeah, like I said, guys, uh, pro probably the match of the night, the, the match that really shocked me the most, uh, I would say over-delivered and... Uh, you know, for Kurt Angle's WrestleMania return, I, I, I thought he looked great. And, uh, yeah, I, so I can't say enough about it. It was great. Let's just, so let's move on to the next matchup. Now, here the, the show kind of falls off a clip for me. If, if they ended the show there, it, everything would have been fine. Uh, next up, you have um, the Usos, the New Day, and the Bludgeon Brothers of Harper and Rowan in a triple threat tag match for the SmackDown Tag Team titles. I would have scrapped this match. Um... The whole point of this match was, you know, the Usos and the New Day are finally get a chance to shine at WrestleMania. Usos' first ever match at WrestleMania after they've been working their ass off for a whole decade. And they, they don't even get enough time to even show what they can do. It's just fucking bullshit, man. It, this, this was... Now, this matches like this are why I'm glad I didn't become a professional wrestler. Because I, I couldn't take it. My ego could not fucking take it if I was told I was going to be in a WrestleMania match and I didn't get enough time to, to do anything. Uh, this had Vince McMahon written all over it. You know, he has a hard on for these new creation of you know tag teams that he comes up with, two monsters of Harper and Rowan. Damn it! And uh, that's what happened here. You know, th this was just a squash match, and uh, I feel bad for the Usos. Feel bad for New Day after busting their ass the whole year, having you know match of the year candidates, Hell in a Cell, almost my match of the year, and for them not to even get a chance and, and uh, you know show what they can do here. I feel bad for both teams, but um, th this is Vince McMahon's world, and um, you know, I, I, if, if if they weren't going to give this enough time, I, I just would have scrapped it from the show. I'd be like, "Fuck it, if you're not going to give me enough time, I'd rather not even wrestle on the show." Um, so yeah, I mean, there's just a, this 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 show just being so long um, really really hurt it for for I think the the crowd and, and everybody. But yeah, let's get more. Let's get into the next match: Undertaker and John Cena. You had Cena out in the crowd. 
you know, I, I, I thought it was pretty cool, uh, the reaction shots to Cena in the crowd. He, he generally, genuinely looked like he was enjoying the show. Uh, it, it's kind of funny how you know, it just seemed like Cena was a spectator. Like no one was really bothering him. And I, I, I thought it looked pretty cool, you know, uh, t to be honest with you. The, the, the whole thing with Cena um, not knowing if, if The Undertaker was really there. Really, really cool stuff. The stuff with Elias really dragged on a little bit too long. It, it, it would have been a... Would have been a big moment if they just went with Elias and Cena in like a 10-minute sprint. I, I thought that would have really been a good way to build a new star, but they didn't go in that direction. Uh, Undertaker comes out and uh, squashes John Cena in about two minutes. Uh, I, I was okay with the squash, to be honest with you. I, I didn't really want to see Cena and Taker go at it. For me, uh, it, it really looked like Taker had a tough enough time just getting through those two minutes as it was. Uh, there's just not a lot at stake right now. I th I think uh, the, the positive about it is this. Undertaker could end his career with a victory at WrestleMania, and at the same time, uh, it gives Cena something to look forward to uh, for SummerSlam. I think at SummerSlam, you could do a career versus career match. This way, Taker and the WWE can cash in on the fact that this will be his last match, and, and Cena should go over Taker uh, in that situation. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, the WWE, they dropped the ball with Undertaker and John Cena. I, I, I think this should have been... A WrestleMania match, you know, five or six years ago, and I think it would have been amazing. But at this point right now, it's just, uh, I just think Taker needs to go out. You know, the WWE, you have to expect them to try to cash in on The Undertaker's last match ever. And I think that's what the, we'll do. And um, I don't, you know, maybe they'll wait until WrestleMania next year. I, I'd like to see them get it over with at SummerSlam. Uh, I, I think Undertaker not being on the card will open things up for younger guys. Even this squash match took just a lot out of the show uh, when you add everything up. So next up we have Daniel Bryan and Shane McMahon taking on Kevin Owens and uh, Sami Zayn. Uh, I would say it, very disappointing from a match quality standpoint. Um, and, and I kind of knew it too. When, when they announced that Shane was not feeling well, Shane didn't look good to me. He looked very bloated, d didn't look in great shape. Uh, so I, you kind of knew something was wrong with Shane when they said diverticulitis. That, that's a serious, um, what do you want to call it, a, a disease or a condition. So I, I kind of knew Shane was going to be limited in what he can do. It was like, to me, this was like watching two handicap matches. It was like Owens and Zayn against Shane, and then it was like Daniel Bryan against Owens and Zayn. Uh, the crowd react, the, Daniel Bryan's entrance, I would say, was, was really awesome. The, the video package they put together for his entrance, uh, the reaction that he got, uh, I thought the, the strikes and the slaps between Brian and Sammy were really cool. You, you could tell both guys really cherished the moment. You, you could tell it kind of crossed both guys' minds that, you know, we, we were in Ring of Honor less than 10 years ago, you know, scrapping, you know, trying to make a, a living out of this. And now we're, we're where we always wanted to be. And you could just tell both guys, you know, grasped the moment and, and, and really made the best of it. I, I thought, I thought you had some great, uh, some great crowd reactions to, to Daniel Bryan. At the end of the day, though, I don't see Owens being happy with this match. You know, you, you, you've seen these documentaries where Owens gets depressed if his matches don't deliver. I can see him not being crazy about this. This really wasn't about the match. This was more about, you know, Daniel Bryan being more of like a Stone Cold Steve Austin and, and just kind of brawling Owens and Zayn and, uh, you know, get, get, getting the tap out with the yes lock on. I think it was Sami Zayn to, to get the uh, submission. So, yeah, I, I mean, it, it, it was a cool moment. The match was cool. It, it didn't over-deliver. Uh, th this didn't end up being like, you know, Rock Hogan level as far as crowd reaction goes. But it, it, it kind of opens the door up to see, you know, Daniel Bryan's back. You want to see what he wants to do, what he's going to do next. I'm just excited to see how far Daniel Bryan can go at, uh, returning as a full-time singles competitor. You're really excited about that. But... The match as a whole, it, it's, it, it didn't hit the level that, that, that I think anyone was expecting. And uh, definitely not as good as the, the other uh, uh, tag match that took place earlier in the night. Uh, so next up, we had Nia Jax and Alexa Bliss. Alexa defending her Raw Women's Championship. Um, really like Alexa Bliss. I, I think great personality. Really, really, um, you know, she's my kind of girl. She's very good looking, I, I, I think. Um, I, I, you know, I kind of found myself rooting for her. I thought this told a great story. Um, you know, the chick, I, I kind of knew Alexa was going to play a chicken shit heel, and, and and that's what it was for the most part. But I'll, I'll give Nia Jax credit. She, she busted out a lot of high-impact power moves. Uh, there was just a lot of, uh, you know, a, a lot of good stuff in this match. I, I just thought it kind of dragged on a little bit too long. Uh, the crowd, you know, the, the, the crowd really wasn't that responsive to it. Um, 
But uh, but but nonetheless, I, I would say really really good stuff between these two. Um, Naya, I think Naya going over. It, it's kind of it kind of um, it's kind of more of this WWE trying to appeal to m multiple audiences. Uh, kind of like the, this non bullying thing where you know we could put the belt on an oversized girl to you know make the oversized women or the oversized people in the crowd think you know everyone has a chance. Uh, you know, to achieve a, a dream like Nia Jax just did of, uh, you know, defeating Alexa Bliss and becoming the Raw Women's Championship. So I, I think that's why they do it, did it. But uh, honestly, I, I thought that the story between Alexa Bliss with Sasha and Bailey, uh, I thought that would have been a better way to go. But, you know, the, Sasha and Bailey uh, don't even make it on the WrestleMania. So that, that kind of sucked. But, um, but uh, let's, so we move on from there. <laughs> Next up, we have uh, the match that I was looking forward to the most. We have uh, Shinsuke Nakamura taking on. AJ Styles for the uh, WWE Championship. Yeah, I mean, it might go down as the most disappointing match of all time. I thought the match was good. Everything that they did was good. It, it just, to me, it just felt like we were waiting, 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 waiting for that explosion, waiting for those spots, waiting for those strikes, waiting for those counters. And it, it just, I don't know, the, the, the crowd, um, and this is why I'm saying that I don't think it was really a great pro wrestling crowd. I, they didn't, you know, and I got to keep in mind too. This was a seven-hour show, so you, you got to take that into account as well. Um, oh, man, definitely not as good as the New Japan match. The New Japan match, they were kind. Of, they had more freedom in that match. You know, you didn't see any crazy spots like a Michinoko driver off the top rope. You didn't see any crazy strikes with AJ hitting the back slaps Nakamura's head or, or anything like that. The, the, the coolest part in the match was the. Um, I, you know, AJ countering the King Shaja into the Styles Clash. That was a nice near fall. AJ hit the phenomenal forearm, maybe a springboard 450 for, you know, a gut shot to the to, to the stomach. Some good sequences there. Really, I, I kind of agree with True Slayer. You know, this is kind of like WWE Nakamura. You know, Nakamura just hasn't been allowed. Um, you know, it's just, he's just, he just feels like such a different wrestler from since the Wrestle Kingdom 2010 main event against Takayama. That, when I saw that match, I was just like, wow, this is just, this just feels like different than anything I've seen, even though that match was so short. Um, you know, the, the Nakamura is, um, just such a, you know, when he was in New Japan, he was just, he was just so believable. But, you know, they're, they're really kind of, I wouldn't say watering them down. It's just, it's just this whole Vince McMahon, uh, uh, you know, uh, transitioning into the WWE. It, 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 it's more of a, he's got to be more of a character now. And, um, you know, I, I don't know if AJ and, and him were, were told to have a certain type of match. I, 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 I know AJ was really excited about this. And I, AJ thought it was going to blow everybody away. And, yeah, I just, I could just see AJ being frustrated. It, it just didn't seem like they had the freedom that I thought they would. I think a lot of people were afraid about that. They did get time, though. They got t uh, 20 minutes. So 20 minutes is not bad. You know, it's better than getting 10 minutes. You know, the the, the finish was... Um, I thought the finish came off great, but it just... I don't know. I, I think one Styles Clash... It just... Uh, if, you, if you've seen what these two guys are capable of doing, it just wasn't a satisfying finish. The, the, this Shinsuke Nakamura heel turn, I thought it was good. I think they need to turn Nakamura heel... Um, like I said in the past, I know Vince has been on record as saying that he doesn't particularly like, you know, Asian, the Asian personalities that, that get into the, the business. He thinks they're kind of one dimensional. So I, I think he has his handprints all, all over this Nakamura heel turn and he wants to kind of craft and make him into it, you know, his own little version of, uh, you know, this heel Nakamura, so to say. But, you know, the, the match was good, though. I'm not going to say it was awful. I mean, it, it was it was still good. Um, it just, just, it, it just, um, and they could have topped the New Japan match too. I, I thought the New Japan match, um, could have had a better crowd. Uh, the New Japan crowd was even better than this match. This match just had an awful crowd. The, the crowd was just kind of pedestrian during it. Um, and I, I really thought they could have fed off of the crowd a lot more, but that, that wasn't the case. The New, New Japan match ended up being, uh, spectacular, uh, compared to this. You know, the, some people were going to give that five. This is going to be like more like three, three and a half at the most. So, so, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I came on here and hyped up this match probably more than anybody, but 
Yeah, man, I, I I could see you guys. Uh, I could see I could see this going down as the most disappointing match of um, you know in WrestleMania history because I I just think the expectations got a little bit too high for it. Uh, so next up, we had probably my least favorite stuff of the night. We have Braun Strowman uh, taking a kid out of the crowd, a kid named Nicholas, and they they uh, Strowman challenges Cesaro and Sheamus for the tag team championships. I thought this was a joke. I, I thought this wasted too much time. Uh, it sucks that you had to sit through this after they, they spent so much time building up Strowman in the Elimination Chamber. Um, you, you know, the, the whole point of this was just to make Strowman look good. I, he could just say, like, I, I don't need a, a tag team partner. I could take anybody out of the crowd and become tag team champion. So, you know, the, 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 this is the uh, this is the whole Braun Strowman uh, mega push right here. Uh, I, I just feel bad for Sheamus and Cesaro, too. I, I thought this made them look, you know, they, they just deserve a lot better than this after after how, gr how great of a year they've had together. But, um... You know, the, the, I, I guess they kind of just wanted to lighten up the show before the main event there. But I, I absolutely hated that whole thing with uh, Strowman going into the crowd. All right, so next up, we have the shitstorm of all shitstorms for the Universal Championship. We had Brock Lesnar defending the title against Roman Reigns. Um, a lot of problems here. And I, and, and I want to say this before I go into the match. WrestleMania rematches do not work unless you got Rock and Austin or the Ultimate Warrior and Hulk Hogan or the two biggest stars in the business. It, it, it you know, I, and you, th you think they would have learned with, um, you know, The Rock and uh, John Cena that the, these WrestleMania um, rematches they they always come off flat. You know, I, I think for the, for the main event of WrestleMania, you want to see something refreshing. You want to see something that that just has that edge. You know. Uh, Brock and Roman was great three years ago, but th this match was no different than the story they told three years ago. Uh, you know, the crowd was just definitely bored by this. And, and, and I will say this, I think part of the reason why we were stuck with this main event is because of injuries from Daniel Bryan's situation to, you know, Seth Rollins blowing out his knee to, to Finn Balor winning the Universal Championship and having to get shoulder surgery the very next day. You know, I, I think those injuries played a big part into why we got uh, this main event again. I, I thought it had, you know, I tried to be positive. I, I tried to say, you know, you don't have to worry about Rollins cashing in the money in the bank. Now, these two guys can just do what they can do. I think the match would have been better had they booked it differently. I thought this should have been more like, um, you know, a Rocky IV type of, you know, back and forth type of war with, uh, you know, Brock not dominating, but, you know, kind of being a little bit more creative with, with Roman Reigns and the moveset. Both guys just, just didn't do anything creative here. It was just, uh, I thought it killed the F5. I, I, I thought there was just a lack of creativity, a, a lack of uh, talent going on here. It just, you know, it, it just didn't, it didn't take any brains to have Brock just go out there and F5 him to death over and over again. I thought, it, like I said, I thought it killed the F5, uh, killed the credibility for that. The, just a lot of negative energy in the air. Um, it just, it just felt like a shitstorm. I will say this though. I thought the match was kind of unpredictable, though. I, I would say, like, if Brock does go over here, it'd be kind of shocking because there's all these rumors about Brock leaving. You know, they they, they uh, building up Roman Reigns uh, to be the man. You you kind of knew uh, it was going to happen here. You know, you know, um, especially because they already faced. I I, f I figured if if Roman didn't take it the first time, he'll take it now. So I, I would say that Brock going over with that F5, and, and really the last couple minutes were really good. The, the transition with uh, the spear kick out into the final F5, I was really kind of on the edge of my seat there. So this was not the worst WrestleMania main event of all time. I, I think this blows away, you know, Triple H and Orton. I think it blows away a lot of other crap that we've had to sit through in the, uh, you know, 80s and the 90s. Um, oh, maybe not the 80s, but th th definitely it was better than some of the main events that they gave us in the 90s. Better than Undertaker Sid, better than the Lawrence Taylor main event. Uh, you know, b better than some of the Triple H uh, disasters that, that took place over the last, you know, 10 to 15 years. So it, it, I don't think it was awful. Um, I, I, I kind of felt bad for, for, for Brock a little bit. I, I think the reason why Brock and Vince had the uh, blow up backstage, apparently Brock and Shane had a blow up too. Uh, I... I'm, I'm assuming that it had to do with Brock saying motherfucker. If, if you look after one of the kickouts, Brock was like, motherfucker. 
Um, which, you know, which was part of the reason why the WrestleMania 17 main event was so great because of Austin's emotion. So, but, you know, because of the sponsors now and the PG bro Brock has to watch his mouth. I'm pretty sure that's why Vince was upset. Um, I'm, you know, Brock might have been upset with the crowd and, and the crowd reaction to him. Brock might have been upset because Dana White was in the crowd. Maybe they were trying to see how much juice Brock Lesnar had as a main event draw. That, that could have something to do with Brock being upset. Um, but yeah, the, the, the crowd was, was, uh, you know, they shit on everything here and, um, we, which is not the worst thing in the world. I mean, I, mean, I, I hate the fact that, you know, Vince keeps on handpicking, uh, these guys and trying to recreate the, the, you know, the Hulk Hogan era. Um, so that, that's really frustrating as well. But we, we've talked about this whole Roman Reigns, uh, uh, push. Uh, it, it'd be nice if they moved on from Brock. Nice if they moved on from Roman, but it, it doesn't seem like they're going to go in that direction. Uh, with Brock retaining, I, I'm in favor of Brock just, uh, you know, staying champion. Because uh, to me, it, it makes this whole match look like a total waste. If if Brock drops it back to him in a steel cage match at the uh, the, the the mega house show in Saudi Arabia, uh, I just I rather see Brock just hold on to the belt. There's so many guys you could, could put against Brock. Uh, in high-profile matches, but the problem is, you know, you, you want to see these championships uh, defended every month, and now they're going with the, uh, you know, the, the Raw and SmackDown pay-per-views, which I'm happy about because the pay-per-view quality sucked last year for the most part, but at the same time, it's kind of hard to, 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 to judge the pay-per-views from last year because every friggin' pay-per-view was like a fatal four-way or a fatal six-way or an elimination chamber or money in the bank. So it was really tough to, to, to grade those shows because I, I don't think they really, you know, gave this Raw and SmackDown brand only pay-per-views a chance if, if, if we're talking about, you know, what they can do by spreading out those cards. But, um, but yeah, that, that, that's, uh, so that's pretty much it guys. I, I was, Really, you know, the, the show really put me in a bad mood the last couple of days, and I, I, um, I had a tough time even even coming on here and talking about it. I, I actually wanted to do a good job and, and watch the show over again, but the show was just too friggin' long. I, I, I couldn't do it. Um, but hopefully you guys are satisfied with the review. Um, uh, NXT TakeOver was awesome. NXT TakeOver uh, New Orleans, great, great show. The ladder match was terrific. I, I would probably say better than any Money in the Bank ladder match from WrestleMania. Uh, I, th I thought it was that good. Shout out to Ricochet, Adam Cole. All, all those guys look great. The, the Roderick Strong heel turn, uh, you know, that was cool to see him joining Undisputed Era. Um, yeah, the uh, the Aleister Black match against Andrade Cian Almas, awesome stuff. That, 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 that kick out. With the uh, DDT, when when Black came to the ring and then he DDT'd him in the kickout, one of the best near falls I've seen in quite some time. I, th I thought the match was spectacular. Uh, Black going over really shocked the crap out of me. I, I very unpredictable match. I thought that was awesome. And Tommaso Ciampa and Johnny Gargano, five star match, awesome stuff. Gargano's the man right now. He is. He is. Um, God, man, he's on his way. And I, I'll tell you, give Tommaso Ciampa credit. Two ACL tears and to be able to put on a match like that, give him a lot of credit too, man. My, my favorite NBA player ruined his career tearing his ACL, Derrick Rose. And for Tommaso Ciampa to come back from two ACL tears and to be in that kind of shape and deliver that kind of match with uh, Johnny Gargano over like 35 minutes. And they, they had me on the edge of my seat. So, yeah, the five-star match definitely stole the show from the weekend. As far, NXT was great. You know, that, that show... That show was uh, tremendous. Three hours long, but no killer. I mean, no filler, all killer. Great. Um, WrestleMania was too long, man. Seven hours with the. Pre I didn't watch any of the pre-show stuff, but you know, just the five hours for the main pay-per-view was too long. Uh, you know, the, 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 they they are just sucking the life out of these shows um, with 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 uh, you know having them run that long. They put too many matches on the shows. They. Um, I don't know, like every time you have a good match, they, they put something on to, to take the crowd out of it. Um, you know, it, you know, I just think feelings need to get hurt. It, it should. They, and they, they even talked about it in commentary, how it's very tough to get on WrestleMania. It's not easy to get, get on WrestleMania. Well, I think they need to make it tougher. So I would have cut three matches from the show. I, I would have cut the U.S. title match. I would have cut the, uh, the Bludgeon Brothers match because, you know, if, you, if they weren't going to let the New Day and, and the Usos do the thing, it's pointless even having on the show. 
And uh, I would have cut the Alexa Bliss match as well. You know, it's just, you know, you, you could just pick one women's match. You know, I love Alexa. I think she's awesome. But, you know, it, it should have been cut from the show. And the Strowman stuff, you could have cut that as well. You, 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 they got to tighten up these shows. Um, so, you know, I, I would say who, 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 who has the most to be proud of this weekend? If I'm talking about the WWE main roster, I'm going to say it's Triple H. Triple H had the match of the night at WrestleMania, put together a great tag match there. I'm sure he had a lot to do with the booking and the structure of it. Uh, I'm assuming Triple H has a lot to do with NXT TakeOver. You know, I'm, 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 I, I, I'm assuming that he had, a, a, you know, some creative influences in it. Um, but it didn't take a genius just to let those guys just do their thing. You know, that, that's the difference to me. It seemed like NXT TakeOver, guys were allowed to do their thing. It seemed like at WrestleMania, you know, the life was sucked out of the crowd and certain matches just weren't allowed to deliver. Um, and so I, I, if I were to say the one person, I'm not going to call them, you know, any bad names or anything like that. I got a lot of respect for Vince McMahon, but, you know, v Vince just has a certain way of doing things. Um, I just think he needs to... <sighs> I, I I think Vince needs to step aside. I mean, he doesn't look good. He looks like he's just getting too old, man. He just he just looks worn down, and uh, you know I I think he has probably has some CTE damage from all the chair shots. Uh, I I I think the, the the amount of stress that that has caused him throughout his life from running this company uh, has taken his toll on him. Uh, I, you know, he's done a great job. You know, he he's he did a great job throughout the '80s, throughout the Attitude Era. You know, Vince is a legend, but I just think there comes a time. Where you got to either change with the times, or you know, just I, I like to see Triple H be the man right now. It, it, I, it, it seems to me like Triple H really knows what he's doing. Um, I, I don't know what it is, man. I, I may, maybe Vince is just maybe because he has so many grandkids, he's obsessed with setting them up for the future, and and the, the best way to do that is to build a company around one guy. Uh, but yeah, I, I agree. I, th I, you know. I think you have to move on from Roman Reigns. I, I really think you do. I think, you know, I have mixed feelings on Brock Lesnar resigning with the company. I, I really have mixed feelings about that. Uh, the only reason I'm, I'm glad Brock is staying is Brock Lesnar, Daniel Bryan, you know, Brock and AJ, Brock and Rollins. There's just so many guys uh, I, I like to see Brock face that, that you could, he could still draw a lot of money with. Uh, but, you know, the him holding the championship and uh, him... You know, you just got to give Brock better opponents, too. I'm, I'm tired of the lazy matches and the, um, you know, quick matches, not saying anything on the mic. I'm tired of that, Brock Lesnar. But, uh, but you know, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I mean, there there is still a lot of great stuff to look forward to. You know, you got Daniel Bryan back on the roster. There's, there's a ton. Of, you know, the, the feel of the company is good. The talent is good right now. I I, I just wish the uh, the structure of these uh, these network pay-per-views would, would just change. I really wish they would, and, um, and you know, I, I ho hopefully everyone can stay healthy, and I think as we get guys that, um, you know, give them more of a chance to get more over, hopefully you won't have to sit through, you know, uh, the same boring main events over and over. I mean, Roman Reigns, I, I don't think it's all his fault. I, I kind of feel bad for him in a way because he was, you know, the, the match was booked a certain way. Uh, I, I do kind of feel bad for him, but at the same time, three out of the last four WrestleMania main events have sucked. So, you know, you got to blame him. That part of the responsibility goes on him as well. Um, yeah, four, you know, four WrestleMania main events in a row. I mean, that, that puts him in Hulk Hogan, Triple H, John Cena, Stone Cold, The Rock. It, it puts him in that territory right there. And, and to me, he just wasn't ready for it. Uh, I think Roman is good. I, I think he, there's a place for Roman. But for me, it's just not the main event of WrestleMania every fucking year. And, uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it, guys. I, I thought WrestleMania started off great. I thought everything went downhill after the the, te the mixed tag team match. And, uh, I, you know, they just got to they gotta tighten up these shows. Uh, they they got to stop killing these crowds. Uh, you know, there, there was an art to putting on a pay-per-view. There was an art to, you know, keeping everything, you know, under three hours. And it just, it just seems like everything is just, I don't know, it's just, it's just too much. Everything is just, every fucking match just, um, 
you know, it, 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 the longer you get into these shows, it just, um, it just make, it just feels like it's a chore to sit through it. And I, and it's, and it's unfair. It's unfair to the talent too. It's, it's unfair to the guys that really deserve to be there. So I'll just say that, um, not everything is bad though. I, I think the WWE has a lot of good stuff that they can do, uh, heading into the summertime. I'm excited to see what they do there in the summer. WrestleMania, um, it would, it would, you know, the, the two main events were a letdown, but, um, we'll see what they can do. All right, guys, that's about it. That's the review, and uh, I'll see you later. All right.